Hello, Chip GT here, and in this episode of Let's Build a VPN Table, I'm gonna be going into VPX. I'm gonna show you how to set up your first table and get some things set up and squared away so that we are all ready to go and ready to start building in a wide body cabinet build. So without any further delay, let's coin in and push that start button. Okay, so we are going into the design phase of building this table, which means we're actually gonna start building it. I'm not using the latest beta build, I'm using beta five. I, I haven't really tested any of the other betas that have come out. I just know there's a lot of issues with it and that's why we don't have a full release of 10.8 at this time. So with that, I'm gonna go to my C drive. I'm gonna go to my VPIN folder, visual pinball, scroll all the way down. And I'm using the 64 version here. And once you get this loaded, I'm gonna stay zoomed in here for a second. I just wanna show you when you go to create a new table, you have a couple of options here. Um, the completely blank table is exactly what it says it is. It's completely blank. There's no audio library, there's no picture library, there's no models or anything. And what you get is basically just the bare bones, nothing. Um, if you click on new table, which is what I recommend doing, you're going to get a, a whole host of different things here. So I'm going to go to full screen here so you can see this. Um, you get all these little options for different flippers. These are 3D models that are built into it. I know that, you know, with VPX, there's not a way to adjust the 3D depth, which is kind of annoying. So that you can't see how you're building it in 3D and you get all these little extra models over here and I'm going to show you how to make some models in the next episode um, but if we go into the table you can see these 3d models and you can maybe see a, a circle mesh sphere here that will simulate a ball but you get all these different options here already pre-built in you get all the models and everything which makes things kind of nice and easy because these are some of the more common uh, pegs and posts that you would see in a pinball machine um, we're going to have to build a couple of things like these rails down here, but that's going to be in the next video. And, uh, just so you guys have an idea what's going on down here in the corner, I have a, uh, a keyboard keystroke recorder. It's capturing everything. So when I hit Q and then Q again, it takes me back to here and you'll be able to see everything that I'm doing. Now, going back to that zoomed view, we're going to turn on a couple of settings first. Uh, we're going to go to view. I like having the grid on. This makes it very easy to see where we're at on the table. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to go to the dimensions editor. I'm going to bring that up right here so you can see this. These are some pre-built in dimensions for different cabinets that people have made. Um, I'm going to go with the wide body cabinet build here. So this is like 32 inches in width by uh, 46 inches in width. And that will give us a little bit better. And all I got to do from this wide body is hit copy, apply to table, and it will look like this. So you can see our grid extends over the side here. This is your play field. This grid is the actual no kidding play field. So you can see that we have a lot of things here that are now on the outside of our play field. And if I go like this, you can see the play field is extended all the way over here. Um, so the first thing that we need to do is highlight everything in the play field. And I mean, it, or everything on the cabinet, really. And then we're just going to simply right click on any of these and unlock. Now we can fully move everything that is built in here around. The first couple things that I'm going to move around, I have some tools over here off to the side. I'm going to move those out of the way. Here's some clocks that help with uh, calculating some things. And then using the magnifying glass, I'm gonna zoom in here. Actually, I'm gonna zoom out first. So we're gonna stay here. The next thing that we wanna do after getting this grid set up, you may wanna move some things around. We actually have to get our layers um, labeled maybe in a little bit better way here. So we have plastics, visuals, shadows, rails, GI lighting, and posts. So. I'm going to zoom in real quick just to kind of show you this. When we click on this side here, we're, we're going to move this over, but this is labeled as the cabinet blade right. 
Um, I'm okay with that, but see how it's down here in the post file? I'm gonna create a new layer. And if I double click on there, I'm just gonna call this um, cabinet parts. I'm not really worried about the cabinet. And then you, you're not gonna wanna push enter, you just wanna select somewhere else and it'll record it. And uh, with that, I can now right click on this, assign to a layer cabinet parts. And it disappeared because I turned it off. But now I can move this over here and I'm gonna move it just outside and we're gonna zoom in a little bit to make it easier to see. Every play field ha on most cabinets has a piece of wood on each side of the play field and this serves as like a, uh, a, a tool, if you will, to hold all your components onto the play field and in some of the new Jersey Jack machines, they've turned this into a light bar, which is kind of cool. Um, but just know that that's what this is. I'm gonna move this over a little bit. I'm not gonna tweak it to its final setting just yet. Um, up here, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. So what we wanna do is this box needs to be in line with the edge of our table here. And then you might see there is this one little line here this is the side of the wood on the cabinet uh, between the play field and the cabinet. So if we don't have this line, there's a piece of artwork on the side. This is the side wood. Um, it's going to look goofy. And then this is your side rail that is on the cabinet. And I'm just going to slide this over and we'll see how this looks now. We'll render it. So you can see here, this is that one piece of wood that most cabinets have screws and other different devices that screw down into this. Here was that side panel right here, and then we have the, um, this, the side rail right here. So now we're gonna stretch some things out. We're gonna move some things over to accommodate this wide body. So first is the back wall. So I'm just gonna stretch this over like this, stretch that over here. And I'm not really worried about the depth right now. I'm going to worry about that later. And then if I zoom out, now I have a back wall. If I try to launch the pinball, it won't go through the back wall. All right, now we're going to come down here. And this, um, this is the, like a ball guide that's underneath the apron. And then we, you can barely see it because there's a line here in the middle. But here we have an apron and you really want to check to make sure everything is labeled and named and in a, an appropriate um, layer over here that you can understand. I'm going to highlight almost everything right here and notice how when I highlight these things, it only highlights everything that is completely selected and wrapped around. So now I'm going to take this plunger, I'm going to drag it over and I'm going to put it on top just a little bit right here. Now I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it in line here at the bottom of the cabinet, just like that. And then this is that little guide that I was telling you about. It's got a side wall. I'm just going to move this over, move that over. Like I said, I don't care about this right now. I'm just trying to get things lined up so that it will go the way that I need it to go. And then I'm going to grab um, we'll grab this and then I'm going to hold down control, which zooms in a little bit. And I'm just going to slide this over to here for now. I'm going to grab this and slide this over a little bit too. And then we'll zoom out. Right click zooms out, left click zooms in. And uh, now that I can see where this is at, I'm gonna line this up a little bit better. And I'm just gonna do, do a real quick test just to make sure that it goes down the trough. Um, I'll wiggle it around a little bit, make sure that there's some room there that the ball can move around. And uh, the width of the ball is uh, one and one eighth of an inch. So you just wanna make sure you have enough room here when you're moving things around and that covers that. And here's that wall I was telling you about. It's, there's no artwork that wraps around the top. It's literally just a wall. And we'll quit that. I'm gonna move this over 
Yeah, I'll put it right here for now. Um, now these these boxes here, these are for the ball shadow. Um, you want to make sure that you have your shadows in a shadow folder because it just makes it easier to turn them off so you don't have to worry about seeing them. And you'll you'll see the ball shadow. And I might do another episode to show you how the shadows work because that gets really confusing for people. Um, but right now we're just going to worry about getting this wide body set up. Right. So I'm going to move that. And now I've got the apron. Now the apron is actually a 3D sculpted piece. So the way that we are going to manipulate this apron is going to look really goofy until I actually create some artwork for it and move it around is we're going to adjust the scale of this apron and we're just going to hit position. We're going to adjust the X scale up to, I want to say it's like 120. I've been, I was messing with this earlier. Actually, no, I think it's like 111 maybe. Yeah, it's getting closer. We'll just make it 113. So 114 is about right. It lines up this right here. But now you'll see that this is all out of whack. That's fine. We're just going to bring this over to like right here. We'll bring this down. We'll bring this down and around here. And we're going to be maneuvering and moving some things around up here, here in just a second. Um, for your ball catch, you kind of want it to kind of come down at a steep angle like this. And we're just going to put that there. This is a grid that slows the ball down. So we're just gonna put this right here. It should slow it down so that it can come in here. And then we're gonna give this a little bit different kind of a Hayaka like that. Now, with that, you can count these boxes and uh, figure out where your center point is. All right, so I know that the middle of my play field, including the launch ramp and all that, is right here where this ball uh, drain is. Uh, and you can count over and you can figure out these guidelines are really helpful. I know that it's like 23 point blah 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 inches, but it really helps you out. This is right at the halfway point in there. I'm going to move this off to the side, knowing that this is where the center line is. And now I want to move, uh, I got I to gotta highlight and select everything that I want to move. It has to be contained inside the selection box in order to move. If you do not select like everything here, it's going to be kind of goofy and you're going to get things kind of screwed up a little bit. And then I'm just going to drag and move everything to be a little more centered on that line. It's moving a little slow because I am like recording while I'm doing this. Uh, norm when I did my test run, I didn't have this kind of choppiness. But I think that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. And what this will allow me to do... Oh, I did not select the shadows. That's okay, I can move these. So... Oops. I'll just move the shadow and make sure that that's kind of centered up right there. And grab that one and make sure it's centered up right there. Now. There's a lot of components in here and a lot of this doesn't get named. So at this time, now that we've got things kind of laid out a little bit, I mean, I know that this is all screwed up up here, but we can, we can adjust this. Like this is simple enough. I'm not going to go out of my way to make it look pretty because I don't know if this is what I actually want it to look like or not. So I'm just going to kind of drag these over and out of the way so that the ball can flow when we go into a testing kind of a mode here in just a minute. So I'm just moving these out and just giving it just a general arch. And then this is the top piece of that. I'm just going to move this kind of out of the way. And we'll move this corner out of the way up there. Move that one down so it's flat. This would be an example of like a plastic um, that we could put some artwork on. I'm going to move that guy out of the way. And, um, I mean, I'm not trying my best right now. Like later on, I'm going to refine this and make it look really nice. But right now I'm just kind of having the plastic arch around with it. And then this is a one way gate. So the ball doesn't bounce back through when it hits the uh, stopper on the other side. So this is our stopper. 
Um, and that way when we launch the ball, should be okay. But in order to make this and get this kind of set up for um, the three lanes that we want to do, we need to move this kind of over and make it squished down kind of thin, like a like the thin metal wall that's on a real pinball machine. And uh, I'm going to just guesstimate and say that that's about right. This is going to be a temporary holder. I'm actually going to design the wall in Fusion 360 and we'll import it. But this is just a placeholder for now. And uh, that should be good. We'll scroll down here. And now I've got enough room where I can move things around and uh, really try it out. Now, one of the first things that I'm going to do is I'm going to delete these little stops here. These things, I mean, it's nice that they give them to you, but they're kind of crap. Um, first, this is a cylindrical tube. And then you get this, this invisible wall that you have to make. And then you have these little nubbins. We are actually going to design um, a full one in Fusion 360 in the next episode. And uh, that, I mean, why have four different things when you really only need one? So I'm just going to get rid of these because they're, in my mind, kind of a pain in the butt. I know some people will like, oh, well, I've got an end here. I'll just line it up and I can stretch the other one out and get multiple different ones. I'm not doing that. I'm actually going to design the no kidding components that I need because I may at some point want to make this table a real pinball machine. So I might as well use the real parts and design it based off of real parts that I can I can buy readily online. You know, I mean, it's just it's a no brainer. You know, so let's go ahead and we'll take a look and see how this looks. And as expected, there's a lot of room over here and that's okay. We're going to have a lane. We're going to have a spacer. We're going to have a drain lane here. And then this is kind of tight, but we're going to use something a little bit different. And I'm just going to launch the ball here and you can see we've got kind of, kind of a setup for a wide body cabinet and it's working for the most part. I mean, I'm not really getting any play right now, but that's because I'm launching the ball kind of kind of crazily in the next episode. We're going to develop this and get it going. Now, with that, we have a lot of work to do with our layers. So if I select the rails and open it, you see how it just says wall? What wall is that? You know, you, you got to find it. So. I don't like when they do this um, in the base table. I don't like that they don't name them what they actually are. Like this one's labeled, that one's labeled, 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 apron. Oh, I forgot we got to do the lockdown bar. Um, so lockdown bar is fairly simple. We're just going to come over here and the top width, which is going to adjust this one and the bottom width, which is going to adjust this one. Um, I want to say when I was doing this exp on my experiment, I think I went to a hundred and 1011 and then drug it over. Still not enough. We'll try 200. See how it's expanding on both sides? That's why you gotta wiggle it and play with it a little bit. All right, so we'll do 190, 190. See if that's still too much. Yeah, about 80. That might be it, that might be money. Mm. Gotta zoom in. All right. We'll keep it 180 for now, but we might have to bump it up to like 182, something like that. Uh, anyway, back onto our wall hunt. We're trying to figure out like where some of these things are, what they are, and uh, like this one actually has a name. That has a name. Okay, here's wall 20. And uh, I like to create names and groupings based off of what things are. And you have different layer heights and things like that. So I try to think of this as like a canvas 
for uh, Photoshop when you're doing this. You don't have to copy exactly what I do, but it is helpful to give your walls names so you know what they are. So uh, just for this one, we're gonna call this the uh, plunger turn. Give it that name. And now, yep. Now down here, we can see that. And I'm gonna create a new layer. If uh, my mouse comes back, wherever it went. Okay, so I need to say something real quick because I thought that I lost everything I just did. Uh, when you're going through this and before you run a test, you need to save periodically. There is no um, auto save functionality. So I'm gonna save this as wide body basic. So we'll save it real quick. Yes, overwrite it. Because you will encounter problems, you will encounter crashes, and you're gonna be like, holy crap, I just lost all that work that I just did because there's no autosave. So with that, now we can come over here. We're gonna create a new layer. And I'm just gonna call this Playfield Level. So this is gonna house all the different components that are attached to the Playfield up here just for now as a placeholder so we have plunger turn assigned a layer play field level we're going to take this one and assign to layer play field level and then what i can do is i can turn these features off and on to find different things this is wall 37 this is kind of like your your loop so i'm just going to call this loop or play field loop back loop and uh, we'll call it yep and we're just going to assign it to its layer play field level this is wall 37 this is actually a plastic so we'll call it loop plastic and uh, I should have a plastics layer which I do and we're gonna assign that to plastics. Because the plastics don't actually sit on the play field. The plastics sit uh, right around ball height, with it, which is about um, you know one inch. And then that goes for you know any of the other plastics that are on here. Like this would be a plastic, I think. Let me see, yep, that's the plastic. And uh, we'll assign this to the plastics layer, plastics. Make sure I got that one, control Z. Assign to layer, plastics. This is a plastic. Assign to layer, plastics. Assign to layer, plastics. And then there's actually one underneath of this. There's like a mid-range plastic. I'm just gonna move them out of the way. Plastics move them back so now I've got all these plastics here and boom you can turn them on and off and and see where things are at makes it a little bit easier but I like I said you gotta name your plastics you gotta name everything that's here and I think this so if it's on top it's gonna be the top layer we're just gonna call this top left drain plastic so now I've got those plastics in there where is this wall I really wish that VPX when you selected something down here would highlight whatever it is that you're selecting there's that I know that there's like a hidden wall back here what is this that's a decal just gonna move that back. Okay, where else would we maybe have some walls? Um, oh, I remember. Uh, inside, so I'm gonna turn these, this plastics layer off, except for that one and that one. So this is gonna be left, Pop, oops. 
plastic. Yep. And now we can turn that off. Off. There we go. And then this one is right pop bumper plastic. Yes. And now we can turn that off and close it. So that's all the plastics. Next, we're going to look at some of these. There's there's some hidden walls in here, and you may be looking at this, and you may be thinking, why are there a whole bunch of different rubber bands? That is because this is actually an animation sequence, so that when it triggers a hit response, it moves a couple of items and gives you the illusion that something is being animated. So you have when when you do that with a pop bumper, you got to have all this in here. It's kind of a pain. So what I like to do is I like to create something to make my life a little bit easier. And you can see there's like a tiny little hint of green in here. This is a slingshot wall. And we're going to just call this, well, they already did, slingshot, left slingshot. But I like to take all the components <clears throat> that are in the slingshot and group them together as one. So we're gonna now create a new one, a new layer. We're gonna rename it left sling. And we'll just click off. So this is part of the left sling. Add to layer, left sling. And as they go away, I know that they're being um, added to that layer because that layer is currently off. Left sling, add to layer, left sling. And now we're gonna select all the rubber bands. Assign to layer, left sling. Next one, assign to layer, left sling. Next one, left sling. And then you can see that there are some switches here. These switches are just for show. Um, but they, they are important on a real pinball machine because that's what actually triggers the sling to fire. So I'm gonna lump those in with the left slingshot. Assign to layer, left sling. This is actually the kicker. It would be attached to a solenoid in real life. So we'll get rid of that. And then this wall is what triggers the whole animation sequence in the first place. Sign to layer, left sling. And that leaves me with the general illumination lights. So if you look over here, I already have a tab for the GI lights and they've labeled them one through four. I th I'm okay with that, but by turning off the GIs, it kind of gets rid of some of the noise when you're going and building a table and you can kind of see here, we'll turn the plastics back on. You can kind of see things a little bit easier. So it's good to have a grouping for your general illuminations. And we're gonna adjust these and tweak these because these shadows, I mean, they look fine when you go to load the table, but they're not gonna be right. Like you can you can already tell that they're these, these lights are not bending around these posts realistically. And oops, did not mean to do that. So you can click on each one of these points and you can adjust and maneuver them. But when you look at like this light as an example, you don't go from the center focal node, you go from the outermost ring um, because general illumination lights are a bulb, not a center focused point. So when you look at some of these, you would imaginary line that comes down this way and you could say, okay, well that arc is not right. Or come down from this way and be like, okay, well maybe the arc is about right. Um, same thing, you got you to draw two lines to see how the light moves and how it realistically moves around post. We're gonna cover that in another episode, just over lighting. Um, but I just wanted to get this foundation done in this episode. So we have, we have a 
pretty good grouping now. I think things are looking pretty well. I'm going to assign this to um, I'm just going to leave that there because we're going to we're going to be tweaking these as we go into the next episode. Um, but I think this is a good starting point for now. So I'm going to save it real quick and uh, we'll hit play. So we've got our wide body set up. We've already we've already got some physics in here. We've got some sounds in here. The ball can bounce around. It can be moved. Um, we can do a ball in hand and see how it's going to move around. You can only do that a few times because the uh, machine will kind of freak out if you do any more than three. But uh, yeah. so we, we hear the sounds, things are moving. It looks okay, like it is stretched out a little bit, but it doesn't look bad. We're going to come in here in the next episode. We're going to start working around this area. We're going to start with the drains because one of the key features to uh, the table that I'm building is I want to have and one of the main reasons one of the main reasons why we actually went with a wide body to begin with is we're going to have six drain lanes like in a regular Jersey Jack. Um, the, well, the first three Jersey Jack machines that came out, I should say. Um, so with that, I want you guys to think about how you want your design to be implemented into this. Um, I am looking at doing the six lanes. And I'm going to copy, and I'll just kind of show you some examples here. I'm going to copy what Jersey Jack did with these rails. And in the next episode, I'm going to show you how we're going to build these 3D models and get them added into the table and positioned right so that the six drain lanes work right. And uh, I, I'm kind of undecided uh, if I like, this is actually the Hobbit. So this is the layout from the Hobbit. Um, I kind of like the way that the Hobbit was done with the drain lanes. You have these four feeder lanes that go to quick shots and um, when you hit this one it would trigger a pop-up and you'd try to hit that one. There were four pop-up bumpers for each of these. I'm not going to do that. I like the idea of having these go to um, quick fire features and then you have the outermost drain lanes and one of the things I like about the jack machines is he turns like your your drain of a ball into a challenge to try to get the ball back and continue to play. That's what this uh, this boron shot was, or bosun shot, or whatever the shot was called. You'd come down, nudge it a little bit, and if this was lit, you could you know get your ball back. You know, it, it was like a little quick kind of thing that you'd try to get your ball back. And then on this side, if you had um, a kicker return, it would it would kick it back. Um, okay, so here is. Pirates of the Caribbean and the basic playfield layout and you can see that the drain lanes again there's six drain lanes here and uh, it's a little bit different design and then on the left hand side you have a feeder lane here a feeder lane here that can come over and go, go through but there's also a chance where it could fall down this way and then right here the ball can fall straight down that way it changes it up a little bit. If I were to design my own, I would probably put a kickback here and have the kickback kind of shoot the ball up and into another feature. Um, see what you guys think. Do you like the Pirates of the Caribbean um, drain lanes or do you like the drain lanes that are set up for The Hobbit? These are the two that I'm kind of looking at doing for my cabinet. So there's a couple of different options here. Tell me what you think in the comments. And with that, I think we're at a point where I'm going to save these files. I'm going to put them up on my uh, Mega Drive so that you guys can download this and play with it and kind of tweak it a little bit if you want. Um, I'm not going to worry about anything else for this until we get the drain lane set up because that really has to happen first so that we can get a accurate idea of where we need to position things and finally get it ready to go. So with that, I think this gives us a good setup for moving forward into the next video. If you guys learned something from this, please give me a like, please subscribe. It really does help the channel to grow. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.